Well, today is the day, uh, and I know it's April, whatever it is, and uh, I wish this was an April Fool's joke, but it's not. It's real. Um, first off, you know, I want to thank uh, Mr. Lurie, uh, you know, obviously for changing my life, you know, drafting me back in 2012, um, and obviously, you know, been here 10-plus um, years um, in the city of Philadelphia, um, changed my life, my family's life and, you know, everybody around me. Uh, secondly, Howie, um, he's a big part of, you know, my success also, um, just, you know, trading up spots to draft me. Um, and obviously, um, Coach Wash was in his ear during the whole draft process about how bad he wanted me to be an eagle and how bad he wanted to coach me. And, you know, Howie, um, you know, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Don, uh, the president, I just want to say thank you uh, you've been a big part of, you know, me being here the whole time, um, and it's, it's been very special. Big Dom, Paisan, always, you're my guy. Um, to every coach, uh, you know, this, this, I've been a part of staff and everybody, um, you know, it's been important to me, you know, these, you know, this, this 12 years. And, you know, even back to high school, Coach Wolfhawk, uh, you know, I can, I can keep going. Coach Wallace, you know, guys that was so important to me um, during my career early on. And, you know, and, and those things that you don't forget, you know, lifetime's a long time. And, you know, I learned that, you know, from a good buddy of mine. And, and it's, it's true, you know, you never forget those people. Um, you never forget, you know, who, who helped you along the way, um, who's still helping you, who still got your back. Um, and so, you know, um, going into this, this whole thing, you know, you know, my family is a big part of, uh, of, of, of what I've accomplished. Um, you know, I like to thank, you know, everybody that's a part, you know, my family, obviously. We got a couple rows, you know, filled up here. Uh, obviously, Casey, you know, her family's here, uh, friends, everybody flew in. Um, so it's, it's, it's been very special. And uh, so, you know, if, if I'm forgetting somebody, you know, the support staff, you know, you can't, nobody really sees what goes on uh, behind the scenes. The trainers, you know, I can, I can keep them named. I can name a lot of them, but Steve-O, you already know. Uh, if I ever need help, I'll be calling you, buddy. Um, so, uh, Steve-O and, you know, Tom and, you know, that whole training staff, Shanice, Jerome, Joe, you know, even Mark, when Mark was here, he's, he's played a big part of making sure I got ready to go. Um, you know, the cafeteria, you know, T-Roy, Keish, you know, everybody, Dara, um, James, Eric, you know, I, I wish I could name all of y'all, but I was trying to keep this as, as you know, as smooth as possible. Um, you know, the video, the video um, department. You know, I got to thank y'all. You know, T4, you're always my boy. You know, uh, <laughs> and you know everybody in, in there. It's always it's always fun and games. And but nobody really see what goes on behind the scene. And those guys are, you know, that staff is just as important um, to me a, a, as anybody um, that's been around me and and knowing you know what we put in. So uh, just you know, it might sound like a script, but you know. I mean, mom, you know, I love you. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're, you're part of the reason why I am where I am today, the success I've had. Uh, and, you know, it took a lot for you to get me to play the sport, you know, growing up. And you always said your favorite words is, I don't want my baby to get hurt. And we had to, I had to real, you had to realize that at some point, you know, you had to let me grow up and be a young man. And, and you did just that. And, and I thank and love you for that. You know, to my sisters, Nikki, Pam, and my two grown nieces right here now. <laughs> uh, thank y'all for always, you know, having my back um, and, and being there, you know, through it all. Monet and Jennifer, uh, I see y'all out there. You know, y'all always been there, obviously. Um, we all know that my brother, um, played a big part in, in being a, you know, a father figure in my life. Um, and, you know, apparently I wish he could be here today, but he's here with me in spirit. And we all know that. Casey, you know, you've always been there the last five years. You know, I met you in 2012, and, and it's always been special. Um, but we've been obviously in a relationship for the, for the last five or six years. Um, so it, it's been special, and you always have my back. Um, but to the city of Philadelphia, uh, you know, it's, it's been important that, you know, uh, we all seen this day come and I always knew this day would come with me. Um, and, you know, the city of Philly is tough to play for. Um, and, you know, playing in Philly, you got to have thick skin, especially being drafted in the first round. 
So to the city of Philadelphia, I thank you a whole lot. You know, this I'm, I see a bunch of faces right here in the, the media. You know, you guys are, you know, y'all have a job to do, and y'all y'all always done that um, in a respectful way, and and that's the most important part is, you know, when you're a good player, um, and you know, you know, the media, it don't matter who you are, good or bad, the media here, you know, it's tough. Uh, it, it don't matter, but they can be good to you sometimes, and you always respect that. But as a pro, you have to realize that, you know, um, you have to realize that it's, it, it comes. It's, they, they have a job to do also, and I appreciate appreciate you guys, you know, just as much as I appreciate anyone else. Because without you guys, you know, a lot of the fans wouldn't wouldn't know, you know, have the insider stuff that goes on um, in locker rooms and you know whatever. Um, so. Whew. <laughs> With that being said, um, some, some, some definitely some special people I really, really, really like to thank. Miss Leanne, you know, I, I appreciate you a lot. Um, and you've always been there since I got drafted. Um, and you always, you know, been there for me. You know, Miss Kathy, um, who can't make it today. I wish she was here. But, you know, she's always been there. And I always consider Miss Kathy and Miss Leanne as a second mom, my mom away from home. Uh, so. Uh, to my teammates, um, that's always been there for me. Uh, you know, you know who you are: BG, Kelsey, Vinny, um, Lane. And as I said in, in my in my um, in my thing that I put on the social media, Derek Barnett. The reason that Derek Barnett is, has a special place in my heart is because that you know Derek and I we we share a similar story, and uh, we we often talk about that story. Uh, and you know, you you can't. You can't thank him enough because two guys right beside each other in the locker room sharing the same story has always been, always been a part of, of of what I what I've never thought I have in a teammate of Derek. So basically, like you know, just growing up in back home, yeah, as a city, um, and you know, you never know that I, I never knew that I'd make it to this point in my life um, in the NFL, and I appreciate um, the small town that I'm from, all the people that's there, and um, just. Me being able to make it out of Yazoo City, it shows the youth that that there's a way out and, and, and that you can you can make it out. It just depends on what you want to do and how you want to handle it. To Mississippi State, um, you gave me a chance to go and play my, my you know college football career there. And obviously I was able to play there three years in a row. Uh, and you know, Mississippi State is, is home, Mississippi is home, but also Philly is home and has a special place in my heart. This decision was not, it was not, it was not easy. And I knew at some point um, in my career, it was time for, for me to, to retire from the NFL is obviously the reason that I'm here today. Um, you know, it, it comes with a lot of emotions. Um, uh, this game is mentally and physically can take a toll on you. And, you know, I've enjoyed it at the highest level. Um, I've been at the highest level. And at that point, I felt like that I've gave this game all I could give. Um, and, you know, the game was given to me back. You know, I've reached, I've been part of the highs, I've been part of the lows in this league, and, uh, you know, and I've enjoyed it all. And, you know, you know as a human, you, you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize and, and, and you ask yourself, um, you know, is this something that you really want to do? And, and I told myself, I wanna, when I make the decision, I want to do it with no regrets, and I have no regrets about making this decision to retire from the NFL. So... <laughs> So with that, um, you know, today is a very special day for me. It's a very special day for my family. It's a very special day for this organization. And it's a very, very special day for the city of Philadelphia. Again, I want to thank everybody that came here to support this. I hope y'all didn't think it was going to be an hour long. <laughs> but I will um, uh, open up to, to, uh, to any questions. Look back at now. What do you want your legacy to be when, when people Philadelphia team and everybody else looking look back at your career? Man, I, when people look back at my career, you know the biggest thing is I want them to look at the way that I played the game, the the, the honest way I played the game, um, the way I went out, um, the way that you know they looked at my leadership. Um, even the younger guys, you know, I still want those guys to call me for leadership advice, um, and that's what I want to be looked at as. You talk about some of the young guys. Do you feel like that's part of your legacy too, like what they do in their careers going forward? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think that's that's part of it because guys, you got guys when I was when I was young, 
um, who led the way for me, guys like Trent Cove, Cullen Jenkins, and Daryl Tapp. You know, those guys kind of showed me the way um, of, of how how to be a professional, how to be a pro, and how to go, go by approaching, you know, things um, in certain ways. Was there a moment that you knew um, it was you weren't going to come back and play any time during the season or after the season? When did you kind of feel like you knew it? Well, just, you know, going in, honestly, going into the season, you know, it was kind of one of those things I had in the back of my head, um, whether, you know, whether it was maybe my last season or, or not, you know, and then, you know, after the season, I kind of, I took some time to myself and, you know, I, you know, realized that, you know, hey, Fletch, I think it's it's time for you to, to go live life a little bit and, uh, you know, enjoy, um, like, things I'm looking forward to is going to see my nephew play football, going to see my nieces play any kind of sports that they, you know, go. And those, those are things that, that I'm looking forward to doing. Um, and, you know, and, and that was the biggest thing. How important was it for you, Fletch, to finish where you started? It's very rare. You have people like Jason and you. <clears throat> And BG and Lane playing in one place the entire time. How important was that for you? It, it was very important, and and you know the biggest thing is is you know the reason I have my entire family here because you know my entire family was at the draft when I got drafted, so I wanted my entire family to be here when I retire. Um, but it was very important, um, you know. So um, you know to me is you know you just you just got to realize and has it set in yet? No, it hasn't. Because you know, normally, you know, you're all, I'm off this time training, but you know, will I miss it? You know, absolutely, everybody does. You spoke about how how it's changed your life, Philadelphia. What specifically about Philadelphia has 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 has, uh, has, has done that for you? Just the impact of just the impact of the great people that that's I've surrounded myself around. Um, that that impact of of you know coming from. A really, really small town, and you know, at the age of 20, 21 years old, I'm in a in a, in a big city somewhere I've never been. And uh, you know, mom told me you, you can't come back home, so you got to figure it out and grow up and be a young man. And I think I did just that. You mentioned how your your mom, when you first started playing, had the thing about not you not getting hurt. Uh, your debil durability during your career, you I think you only missed a little more than a handful of games. What do you attribute, attribute that to, and how were you able to kind of manage pain management and play through that? <laughs> I mean, I don't get banged up too much. You know, um, the games I did miss is because I just spe specifically just couldn't go. Um, I think in, you know, the first time I missed a game, I think of my rookie year, I had a concussion. Um, I couldn't go there. Uh, it was the last game of the season. Then the next two games I missed, I think it was a grade, like two or three cap strain which I worked my butt off in the training room and come back in two weeks. Um, but, you know, it was just the, the, off, the way that I trained in the offseason, honestly, um, because, you know, I trained the same guy for a long time, and he always told me, Dion always told me that less was more. And, you know, at first, you know, I didn't, didn't understand what he was saying because I was such a young player. But then the older I got, I understood, you know, why he always told me less was more. And, you know, just the way he, we trained and recovered and the way we approached things in the offseason really helped my durability during the season. And I'll follow up real quick on that. Kelsey has mentioned how the, the injuries, that he just they basically put a huge part in him retiring. Um, for you, how fortunate do you feel to kind of get out with never having really a major injury? And how do you feel physically at this point in your life? I mean, right now I feel great. <laughs> but I mean, just you know, knowing what you got got to put your body through, you know, during the during the season, um, knowing that the pain tolerance is, you know, in week one is going to be totally different in week fourteen, um, and you know, you go through it and you go through it and you go through it and you find a way, and and, and that's what that's what football is about. You finding a way to go out there um, and to, to try to get the job done right for your team. You know, you know, everybody around me know that. Something has to be broke for me not to go play, and then that's the way I approach it, and then that's the way that you know that I always try, um, try to try to try to be that guy, you know, on Sundays. And sometimes I just tell you know, coach, hey, just get me to Sunday, and and, and then you'll appreciate it. Um, so there's just certain things that you got to know your body. Um, you got to train the staff that knows your body, that know how to how your body responds to certain treatments to to get you to go. You you shared a similar story, and you never thought you had a teammate in him. In what ways did that show up and support you throughout your career? So early in my career, um, you know, obviously um, my brother passed away. Um, and early in Derek's career, his brother passed away. 
So I was there for Derek to lean on his shoulder, to tell him that I know what he was going through, um, to let him know that, you know, no matter what anybody says, it's going to get better, it don't. And um, just just me giving him that, those few those few words and, and the encouragement of just being there for him as always. Um, and, and he trusted me and know that I had already been through that. Um, and, and that's why we have so much respect for each other. For you, Flash, how much is, is Shadrick in your mind today? He's with me, you know. Uh, I'm doing everything um, the way that he would want me to do do it, um, the way that, you know, he would want me to um, have the entire family here. Um, he would want to be here. Um, so, you know, he's always with me. Um, obviously, you know, he's tattooed on my forearm, so he's always with me. And, uh, you know, I know he's appreciating it, and, and he's probably got his, stick, ch his chest stuck out right now. Is how proud of it he is of his little brother, his sure. little big brother. <laughs> I'm sure uh, favorite memories, Super Bowl and, and winning awards, are there, any, are there any moments that maybe people wouldn't you know, know what happens behind the scenes that you really will stick with you when you look back upon your career? Uh, I mean, there's so many moments that's going to stick with me. You know, um, obviously, um, we've always had a great locker room. You know, I've always liked, you know, kicking it with the boys in the locker room, you know, hanging out, you know, between meetings and practice, um, after practice, you know, just things like that. Those are those, I think that's the biggest part that, that I'll miss, you know, being able to, you know, go around and, and joke around with adults all the time. And at the same time, we got a job to do, um, you know, um, when we go to practice and also, you know, getting ready for a game. Is the Hall of Fame something you spend any time thinking about and would that mean a lot to you? <laughs> I think me and Howard just talked about that. I got to get in the Eagles Hall of Fame first, so that might help me. <laughs> but obviously, yeah, that's something that I think about. You know, you know, apparently, you know, it's 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 all in everybody else's hands right now. But you know, hopefully, uh, you know, one day, um, you know, a few years from now, is uh, putting on a gold jacket, and I'll be looking forward to it. And I'll have the same exact family here, and then we all be celebrating. How early in your career, plus, did you realize you were that level of player? Uh, I think probably after my, after I made like my first Pro Bowl, uh, I didn't, I, the year I sh should have made it, I didn't, which always happened in the second year, I, I went on and to make six straight. Uh, so, you know, at that point, I felt like I could be a really dominant player. And, you know, obviously a lot of people just kind of, you know, some games I would just take over the game. And then I realized like, man, like I, I, I could be really, really good at this, you know, um, so, so yeah. You, uh, at what point in your career did you realize the impact that you had on the city, the team? You could see your impact come back here, at least realize that how much you meant to the place. Um, I realized that, like you know, at the point where um, when I was in the room, um, it was I, when I was the guy, right? When I was, I was kind of had to be the leader in the room, um, and then you know, and that, and I, my attitude had to affect you know everybody else around me. Um, but the city um, had an effect on the city. I mean, I think, honestly, like year five, four or five, you know, I kind of flew on the radar a few years and had a, excuse me, had a, had some solid years. But, you know, then I just, the biggest thing for me was just stay consistent and, and just continue to get better. Kelsey mentioned he, he played with very few players that would succeed regardless of scheme or philosophy or coaching, and you were one of them. Um, did the game come easy for you at times? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it never. It never came easy. Um, I had a teammate uh, who's now head coach in the NFL, D'Amico Rhines, and he his words to me is, "You don't let a scheme reflect what kind of player you are." He said, "Great players find a way," and that always stuck with me. No matter what scheme we was in, um, no matter where they told me to play four technique, um, you know, two eye, three technique, move to a five, it don't matter. You know, he said that don't you don't let that determine what kind of player you are. And he said, you just go out and dumb them and do your thing and they'll find a way for you. Let you thank the uh, video guys. And there have been some moments in your career where you were mic'd up and it felt tones and it was entertaining. And uh, fans have really responded to some of the moments when you're mic'd up and you and BG are having those moments. A, who's going to keep BG in line without you there? And then B, uh, what is it like to be on the field with him for as long as you are and when he's like that? I think we'll have to give Big Dom a mic. Big Dom going to keep him in check, you know. Or you know, put like a buzzer or something on them. Every time you start talking, just buzz them and it vibrates. So. <laughs>
<laughs> my, uh, right now, just um, just taking some time to myself. Right now, you know, um, that's the biggest thing. Obviously, everybody know I'm a I'm a I'm a rancher, not a farmer. Uh, but I, I do a little ranching, and you know, honestly, I'm uh, just making a slow transition to to to, to life. You know, um, and you know, hopefully, you know, I'll, I mean, obviously, I'll be back around here. You know, um, a lot. Um, just trying to still help help younger guys just develop, um, and you know, just work on their game. But um, but in the meantime, I'm just you know having some peace. Um, and again, I get to go enjoy watching my nieces and nephews play sports um, and, and grow up. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. Have you spoken to any of your former teammates who have retired about what it's like to make that transition? And, and what, so, what kinds of advice have they shared with you? Just don't get in a rush. Um, you know, you know, some guys, you know, I, obviously me and Trent are really, really close. Um, and, you know, and Trent say, hey, man, like you take your time. You know, you, you do what you need to do. Take your time. Make sure you have a clear mind, making sure you have that slower transition to, 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 to life. Right. Because things are going to be different. You know, um, I have a lot more free time, you know, um, and, and 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 to be smart with whatever decisions you're making as if you were, if you were still playing, because obviously your name is still attached to the NFL because it was still you get in trouble. It's, it's still going to come up as former Eagles, you know, player or whatever. But just being smart, you know, making a slow transition, um, you know, whether it's, you know, moving south, staying here or just, you know, just figuring it out. Think back to the 21-year-old who came in 2012. How are you different now? Uh, I'm a lot different. You know, obviously, um, you know, just just growing up and and having to become a young man um, a lot quicker than than you know than I had to be um, because obviously it was a I was a professional football player at the age of 21, right? So at that point, you know, I try to give advice to a lot of a lot of a lot of the young players. Say like, you're not in college anymore, um, and you know, you just you know, have to take that advice from them, from the, your, your your peers, obviously, and, uh, you know, just be smart about any decisions that you make. Fletch, in two weeks and two days, the Eagles will make it on the first round pick. What advice would you have to that person walking in Philadelphia first time? Uh, come humble and ready to work because it's not easy here. You got to have thick skin. Uh, the media is, you know, the fans love you, media love you, but... You know, the biggest part is, is, you know, make sure you come in with a clear mind, you know, a humble mind and, and, and be around, be ready to be around some really, really good teammates and good coaching. Good. Right. Again, I want to thank everybody that showed up, coaches, my family, everybody, Howie. Thank y'all.